Welcome back to the wasteland. So I have a lot to tell you guys. Um, I was supposed to start recording like two hours ago and totally got sidetracked. All right, so we're at Red Rocket. Um, I streamed Fallout 4 too. If you didn't watch the stream, you can watch it. It's a little slow moving, but we just did a lot of stuff. We decorated my house. Maybe I'll show you that first. So we decorated my house a little bit and people taught me a little bit about how to place things and that was really awesome. So we have a nice bright area now. I've got myself a desk. We have ourselves some adorable little pictures. Uh, magazine racks, bobblehead stand, get those all out of my inventory. Uh, armor stand, I got that for free from the Creation Club one day. And I even put up some little, uh, some little toys on my shelving. So we fixed that all up. That's what we did on stream. Oops, oops, random ladder that I had to put up there to put. Do, do, do. Okay. So today I was supposed to start two hours ago, but I need another thing that happened. Oh my goodness. So another thing that happened during the stream is I had to go defend a settlement or something. And I ended up killing some caravan guards because they got hostile towards me and Nick hated me so much he kept trying to kill me. So I had to sleep 24 hours, go grab Nick, but Affinity completely shot with Nick. So I give up. I'm not going to try to get to his special quest before Far Harbor anymore because I totally screwed it up. Uh, my saves were all quick saves, so it just, it didn't work out. So today I built a shop. And I haven't really decided, I'm thinking of extending this to match up with the red rocket roof. So I haven't put walls up on this side. But look, I even I even have lighting and I use conduit. I'm going to be super proud. So this, okay, so a little bit pay to win. Um, this was free at one point on the Creation Club. I only buy stuff when it's free from the Creation Club. It is by far my best armor. Best armor. Hands down best armor. Um... So that is what I am going to be using to go to uh, Far Harbor. And then I made myself a little shop with all my power armor so far. This is my second best. It is X01 MK2, yeah. So that is what I'm gonna put Nick in. And see, look, I even used conduit. I kind of figured out how to use it. I'm not sure if this is right. I, I Those I need to do so that I can get light and stuff, but I kind of figured it out. I screwed up this side. I don't know, whatever. I'll figure it out later. And I need to put one here to make sure my, you know, put these two here to make sure my sign lit up. But yeah, that is what I've done. I'm really proud of my shop, guys. I'm really proud. Also, during stream, uh, people explained to me why I always had the stupid little gap. Why I always had the gap? I need to be using shack upper flooring. So I use shack upper flooring. I don't have the stupid little gap here. Thank you so much, guys. Um, but yeah, now we're going to start into Far Harbor. So I'm gonna go hop into my power armor. Actually, I'll make Nick in his first. Um, and because of the door I picked, the ladder won't actually match up. I can walk in fine, but I don't think dog meat will get in here sometimes, but Nick will never ever come in, which is kind of cool. I don't want them in here anyways. So let's put a fusion core. Uh, we'll put this one in. And we'll bring it outside to put Nick in. Then I'll hop in my power armor and we'll be right back. Okay, so Nick is hopping in his power armor. Reach. What do you mean it's out of reach? Give it up. Go over Over there. Sure thing. Oh my gosh. Move I don't here. think I can get there. Here. Good plan. Head over there. Can do. Come on, get over. Go check that out. Can't be done. Okay, come on. Go there. Count on it. Done and done. There we go. Get in your power armor. The other thing I did on stream was... Dun, dun, dun. I fixed up all my supply lines, so everything actually has a supply line. I guess I could make Amanurthy Farm go to Red Rocket, but whatever. I prefer not a lot of people coming to Red Rocket. And I didn't fix them up quite as nice as I wanted to, but I had a hard time finding some provisioners. But now all my settlements are connected with supply lines, so I don't have to worry about building stuff. Are you going to get in it or not? Thank you. James. So, Far Harbor. Uh, let's pick that quest and get going. 
Weird little broken down houses. Coastal cottage. Ooh, ew. Bad, bad Marlurk. Don't run away. Don't run away. I wasn't done killing you. Whoa. we go. Get it. Get it. Get it. Mm, yes. Marlurk, you're dead. Yeah. Oh yeah? You think you want to mess with me now too? Boom. Dead. There's a lot of rads here. You gotta reload sometime. Really? A raider? What are you doing here? Go away. See, now all of a sudden my guns feel good again. I also double checked all my guns. What is down there? Hello, Raider. Do you got anything interesting? Anything useful? Ah, a little bit. Got a TV and stuff. Nice little chair and some cans, bottles. I realized while I was out and about, I need more. I need to always pick up more wood. Ooh. Ooh, what's that? Nuka Cola Cherry. It's a cute little place. Ooh, it has a workshop here. Very nice. I'll just take all the things. Hmm. Oh, it's raining inside. Well, now that we killed those things, maybe we'll check out there's a little cave down here. Yes, yes, we're working towards. Oh, maybe that's just where the Myrlurks were. I guess that's all. Nothing interesting. Coastal cottage. Okay, all done. Let's go uh, head back out. Where were we going? Oh yes, we're heading across here. All right. I wanna head over there? Maybe I should check this out. Oh yeah, I do wanna head up this road and over there. Maybe I took a bad route, oh well. Oh, look at that! We found the place! Oh my goodness, we found it. All right, so we need to uh, travel to the Nakano residence. Maybe I should show the summary. I've agreed to take on a case for the Valentine's Detective Agency. I'll need to interview the client, Kenji Nakano, at his home. All right, buddy. You have a nice home. I actually really like this place. It's really nice. Damn it! Come in! I know you're listening on the other end. Where is she? Where is my daughter? Kenji, please. You've been at this for hours. Stop. You need sleep. She's out there, Ray. Someone has her. It could be raiders, or gunners, or God knows what else. Oh, man! All right, get out of your power armor, Nick. All right, so we left our power armor outside, and I am wearing some charisma gear, a nice fancy hat, and uh, <laughs> my nice dress. So, Nick, shall we go inside and see? I uh, hope you don't mind. We let ourselves in. Nick, thank God. You need to get to work right away. She could be hurt. She could be... Whoa, whoa, slow down. Uh... Kenji, was it? Why did you go over the details with me and my partner here? You brought a partner? Good. The more eyes, the better. Oh. So, what's the story with you and Nick? Nick didn't tell you? Ran with him on one of his cases a few years back, searching for some sort of lost heirloom. He needed a boat. Ah. Things didn't end well. We were double-crossed by the client once we had what he was looking for. I still have some lead lodged into my hip. Ow! Uh, right. Yeah, it's starting to come back to me. Sorry, things ended sour. We got out. That's all that mattered. And now you can return the favor by finding my daughter. Ooh, I always said I would always pick the sarcastic options. Yep, that's me. Lowly partner. I don't even get real business cards. Uh, <laughs> right. Getting back to my daughter. 
It all started with this damn radio. Radio? Our daughter Kasumi likes to fix things. The radio was her latest project. Until she made contact with some kidnapper who lured her away from us. Or maybe she left on her own. She's not a child anymore. Our daughter is 19. She knows how to survive and she's capable. I... think maybe she left because she wanted her own life. No. She would have told us where she was going. She would have said something. I know my daughter is in danger. I can feel it. Find her, please. Oh. Let's talk money. Investigations for the missing aren't cheap. Oh, sorry about this, Kenji. Expenses and all that. Of course. How does 350 caps sound? We're gonna try just for a little bit more. If she went far, that means travel expenses. We could make it 400. All right, I, I think that's good enough. Um, any leads? Do you have any idea where she could have gone? We know she took one of the boats, but that's all. She could be anywhere. Oh, man. We'll find her. Don't you worry. Thank you. Her room is upstairs, if that helps. And if you had any more questions about her, just ask. Don't worry, Kenji. We'll get to the bottom of this. Just sit tight. Oh, man. Let's see what else we know about her. Mrs. Nakano, I suppose you have questions about my daughter. Yeah. Where's the radio? Tell me about this radio your daughter was working on. I remember Kasumi was very excited about it. I figured she was secretly trying to make contact with Diamond City or another settlement. Oh. We're pretty isolated out here. She only has us for company, and Kenji can be... overprotective. Oh. I'd like to know more about Kasumi. Might shine a light on where she's gone. My daughter is strong, focused, careful. That's how I know she's still alive. But why would she leave without telling us? Maybe we... No, never mind. I don't want to waste your time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Tell me what's wrong! Every detail is important, Mrs. Nakano. Don't hold back. It's just that we've been fighting a lot more. Oh. All of us. Ever since Kasumi's grandfather passed away, he was the only one that could really talk to her. Kenji and I don't understand machines, but those two could work together for hours. She started staying in her grandfather's boathouse late into the night. I thought she was just trying to cope with the loss, but now I wonder what she was up to. Oh. Nothing else right now. Okay, let's go check out her room. She said it was upstairs. Uh, how do I know which one's hers? Oh, that's a nice bathroom, actually. Uh, I'm gonna Looks guess like this it's is this Kasumi's one. Kasumi's room. Let's see if she left any clues about where she went. Uh, radio. Let's listen to the project about the radio, shall we? Oh, I don't want radio. I want inventory. Sumi's projects. Oh, no, wrong one, wrong one. No. Personal log. There we go. Project log, radio. Correction, working radio. I'll finally get some news outside this house. My handle is going to be, let's go with Ohm's Law. That should confuse the creeps. And if someone actually gets the reference, then we'll at least have circuitry in common. Ohm's Law is her name, apparently. Or at least that's what she's gonna- Oh, <gasps> sorry, I'm taking that. Uh, anything good around here? Not really. Ah, oh, juke and jive! The life of every party. I need to make a dance house one day. Oh, the kitties! Anything good in there? Duct tape is good. Fuses. Hey, you, uh, got a sack? Oh, oh, oh! Have to be sarcastic. Does bashful mode come standard on all sense, or did you have to pay extra for that? Yeah, no, only on me, and I suppose that's sort of the issue. I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but uh, well, I know I can trust you at this point. What? For as long as I can remember, I've been getting these uh, flashes, memories of places I've never been, things I've never seen, memories of Nick's. 
They're not bad. They're just, um, they're just this inescapable reminder that I'm not the person I think I am, that I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine pretending to be human. Sarcasm! Someone your age should be happy to have any memories at all, let alone a spare set. Heh, <laughs> I suppose so. But having to juggle my memories and all Nick's baggage makes things tough sometimes. Don't get me wrong, I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. Aww. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. Why I get to live cushy in Diamond City and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but my entire life I owe to Nick. Everything that makes me who I am. My judgment, my speech, hell, even my name. They're his, and I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them, without them I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. Oh, You have built your own life. You've already built a life for yourself, Nick. You've got the agency, a home, friends. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I... I'm just gonna need some time to think on this. I appreciate you hearing me out. You're... You're a real good friend. Thanks. Oh, Thank you! What's Wait. up? Go ahead. Does this you mean... Know, there is this chunk of Nick Valentine history I've been hoping to put a bow on for a while now. I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. What kind of history? Did I just get his quest? What kind of history are we talking here? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people. But he knew the end was coming, so he sealed himself inside a personal shelter located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. A sub shop? An evil king in a sub shop. Does a meatball monster show up at some point? Yeah, from what I've heard, the pastrami golem is the one you really have to watch out for. <laughs> anyway, if you're done being a wise ass, the story gets even more twisted. Okay. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world sound familiar only eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana no cryo sleep for him no he invested his money in some sick crazy radiation experiment whoa you've really done your homework on this guy i have and i uncovered a doozy eddie winter went and turned himself into a ghoul 200 years before it was fashionable Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him, so that never happens. You in? Oh, man. Why do it? I, I don't get it, Nick. Why kill Eddie Winter, even if he is still alive? This sounds like... Some kind of vendetta. I've got memories of a, of a girl. My girl. They're not really my memories, I know that. They're Nick's. But the girl, she was real. What? She was beautiful and innocent. And Winter killed her. Now he's got to pay the price. So, knowing that... Are you in? Yes. Yes. All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. Good. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Okay. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes incriminating different criminal associates. 
On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get winter. Oh. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, uh, including one of winters that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. My gut tells me the Boston Police Evidence Terminals are the key to cracking this one. It's probably worth paying a visit to any of the departments you might have stumbled across. What? Oh my goodness! I can't believe this. I'm like, I finally give up on doing this. And then boom, boom, we get his, we get his quest. Of course, of course that's how it happens. I need to stash away a whole bunch of these, by the way, because this is way too many hollow tapes. Detective Valentine, Captain Widmark here. I'd just like to reiterate how excited we here at the Boston Police Department are that you'll be joining our investigation. Commissioner Turner has already regaled me with the tales of your adventures in Chicago. As you know, Edward L. Eddie Winter has been a pox on this beautiful city for nearly two decades. Extortion, murder, racketeering, kidnapping, name a crime he's committed. The epitome of a cold-blooded, brilliant, slippery crime boss. Fortunately for us, over the years, Winter has also developed that most self-destructive of character traits, uh, supreme arrogance. Starting a little over a year ago, Winter stopped coding his correspondences and began communicating entirely via unencrypted holotapes. Each one addressed the subject in question and very clearly signed off by Winter himself. He's obviously mocking the authorities. He knows we're monitoring his communications. He doesn't care. Winter thinks he's untouchable. He's wrong. This is when the game changes. Those holotapes are the key to building a case against Eddie Winter. And they're what this task force will focus on. His crimes, his words. Total self-incrimination. Get those holotapes and we get Winter. Oh, wow. So let's listen to the very first Eddie Winter holotape. Message to Johnny Montrano. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You fat, lazy piece of shit. I knew. I knew this arrangement was too good to be true. Let's join forces with the North End, huh? Bury the hatchet? Work mutually against the common enemy? Well, you put the nail in that coffin. Huh, boyo? What did you have to do, Johnny? Huh? What was your job? Sit in your car, on the corner. Keep your eyes open. If you see a uniform, you get out. Walk down the street, knock on the door, and let the fellas know there's trouble coming. Easy as pie, right? I could have got a nine-year-old from the projects to do it, but no. In the interest of Irish-Italian relations, I give the job to you. So what happens? Nine. Nothing. Nothing happens. You sit on your fat ass dribbling cannoli cream onto your third chin. You watch. You watch the uniform blow months of planning all in two minutes. Congratulations, Johnny. You got me. You and your pal sure put the screws to old Eddie Winter. You should tell his funny story to your little girl when you tuck her in at night. In that corner bedroom upstairs pink wallpaper, little house on Prince Street. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Winter, signing off. Oh man, that's so sad. But nine is the number on that hollow tape. Oh man, now I'm conflicted. Now I don't know what to do. Now I think maybe we should actually do that. Um, so I need to investigate the boathouse. Where is the boathouse? I can travel here now, right? So I can travel here now. So I can continue and investigate the boathouse later. But 
Next time, maybe I'll go around and try to pick up some hollow tapes and get Nick's special quest done. I can't believe it happened like that. I finally was like, I give up and all of a sudden I can do it. So, <laughs> all right guys, uh, I'm going to head out. Next time we're gonna find ourselves some hollow tapes and hopefully get Nick's special quest done. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.